KwaZulu Natal Province, Mr. Sife Zigalala. No, I must start afresh. The Mtiane family, those are the people the daughters of the late Justice Kenneth Kailishle Ntiane Ujabu Nozama Nozanele No Ayanda. We greet you. The Chief Justice of the Republic of South Africa, Justice Mhueng Mhueng. The Premier of KwaZulu Natal, Mr. Sitle Zigalala. Justice Togo Zilembata, Justice of the Supreme Court of Appeal. Members of the Executive Council of the Province of KwaZulu Natal who may be here, distinguished guests present here, fellow mourners, and ladies and gentlemen. We are gathered here this morning to pay our last respects. to a distinguished human being, a distinguished jurist, the late Justice Kailishle Kenneth Mtiani. I am privileged to have been asked by the family to direct the program this morning and I will therefore be doing that this morning. Uh, we are going to run a very tight program and therefore I will be asking the speakers to stick to the time allocated to them. But before we do that, we have to do the national, sing the national anthem it will be sung by the professional singers in KwaZulu Natal Philharmonic Orchestra, conducted by Mr. Bongani Tembe. And thereafter, we'll have uh, the opening prayer by the principal chaplain, Reverend uh, PLP Gumede. Can we have the national anthem? May we all stand as the orchestra sings the national anthem for us.
Thank you very much. You may be seated. May I then call upon uh, the principal chaplain, Reverend PLP Gumede, to give us the opening prayer. They will just sanitize before you come, Reverend. Come, let us pray. Eternal God, the creator and upholder of all things, your ways are not as our ways, nor your thought as our thought. Your wisdom is unsearchable. Your purposes cannot fail. Humbly, we worship you, and as a trust in children, we come to you, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ and our Father. Let not your heart be troubled, Neither let not us be afraid. Comfort us in this natural grief of parting and help us to conduct ourselves as those for whom death itself is swallowed upon in victory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who lives and reigns with you now and forevermore. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass again. It does and lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil, for thine is thy kingdom, thy power, and thy glory forever and ever. Thank you. Thank you very much to uh, initially the orchestra as well as Reverend Gumede. We are now going to have the reading of the obituary and I'm going to ask uh, Mrs. Zama Mkosi, not Mkosi, uh, who is going to read the obituary. May I request that we all stand as she reads the obituary. Zam Kulu Wena, we magnify the Lord, we magnify the Lord, we magnify the I'm 
Kulu Wena Sibenza Kulu Wena Amen Amen You can always judge the character of a person by the way he treats his fellow man. Jeffrey Archer. A curious moment we are in. We pay final homage to Kylie Le Kenneth Mtiani. Ubaba, Umkulu, Umzal, Usbar, a dedicated husband, Ubabwak, UKK, an esteemed jurist and an active citizen of our beloved nation, South Africa. On behalf of the entire Mtiani family, I invite you to join as I pay last respects to the pillar of the Mtiani family and a life well lived. Kenneth Kaili Mtiani is the son of Toby Eslina Umangumal and Logwake Philip Mtiani who have both gone to be with the Lord. Justice Ntiani was born on the 13th of September, 1944, Mzinyat. What a day that was, when the earth gained a soldier, a humble yet gigantic soldier. Ubaba lost his young sibling at an early age and his father, Dlogwa Kimtiani, at the age of four. Umang Umalo subsequently got remarried and Justice Mtiani gained a brother, Utumsani Thope, who has also gone to be with the Lord. The loss of his father at a tender age of four acted both as a huge challenge and a source of inspiration for Justice Mtiani, who was now being raised by a young single mother, Osebenze Makishin, Umangumal, my father's all-time hero and role model. Justice Mtiani's response in an interview when asked about people who inspire him these were his words. My mother played a role of a father and a mother for many years. She was my guide, my star, my everything. I can't think of any other role model other than my mother. The tragic and unexpected loss of his sister, then his father, forced their relocation from his place of birth, M. Zinyati, to M. Kumban. This disruptive set of circumstances early on in his life would go on to significantly shape his formative years. Given the dire circumstances and living conditions in Kumban, Ujastis Mtiane's entrepreneurial spirit was awakened and he built potential income streams to support his family. These range from amateur photography, being a garden boy, to amateur boxing, to playing football for the then Zulu, Zulu Royals. The, his involvement in sport was initially birthed out of desperation to fend off poverty through the stipends that he received from Zulu Royals, for example. Thankfully, his passion for sport was sustained and he took on playing tennis at a provincial and a national level, an avid five kilometer runner, twice a week, I might add, even at the age of 75 years, and subsequently golf, which was another life, another love of his later life. These early life challenges under the repressive apartheid system were character defining for Justice Mtian. His values of excellence, humility, and integrity were formed and shaped during this period, which underpinned much of Justice Mtian's life. Justice Mtiani finished his high school and was awarded a bursary to study social work at University of Zululand, Ongoy. He was on this career path until one of his childhood friends, Mr. Ernestine Kuhn, who is now also late, swayed him from social work to law on the basis that lende social work KK in Abafaz. And so his legal career began. My father's work ethic, commitment to hard work, which he has passed on to all of his children, saw him obtaining his B. Uris from Ongoy in 1984 and later obtained his LLB and LLM respectively from the then University of Natal Howard College. KK, as he was fondly known, was an exemplary family man. In 1969, 
he met the woman of his dreams, Standiwe Phyllis Kuzwai. Although Standiwe, who was then a qualified nursing sister, at the time Ubaba was just a general laborer, sweeping floors at the sugar terminals in Maiden Wharf, love won the day and KK married up when he married Standiwe on the 9th of December, 1972. Justice Mtiani loved Makuzwai unconditionally. Joined at her hip in awe of her very existence and the aura around her. Much like a teenager, Ubaba was smitten with our mother's internal and external beauty until the day she took her last breath a few days before he took his last breath. The bond between KK and his wife was a heaven on earth experience for all of us who were privileged to experience and be influenced by. The same attention to detail and dedication that Justice Mtiane showed towards his wife, he would also display towards his children. His family was everything to him. The heaven on earth bond between Kailith and Makuzwai birthed five girls, Bachabulile, Zamantungwa, Tembagaz, Zanel, and Ayand. Tembagaz, Justice Mtiane's third daughter, went to be with the Lord on the 16th of February, 1999. This was to be the most painful defining moment for Rubaba Noma and our whole family to have lived through. Him losing a child at a young age was a moment when Justice Mtiane had to confront the reality that not everything in life can be controlled. And his, one of his favorite sayings was, never stress about anything that you cannot control. Beyond raising his own children, Justice Mtiane steadfastly identified, fostered, educated, mentored, and sponsored many deserving children, some of whom he took to his own home to live with and treated as his own offsprings. Never losing hope with some of the unsuccessful mentees he forged ahead with his ideal of empowering the helpless. Justice Mtiane was an advocate for others to succeed. He lived to bring out the best in others and wherever he could, build bridges for others to walk on in order to achieve greater things for themselves. Being a father of girls and being raised by a young single mother, women empowerment was a cause very close to Justice Mtiane's heart. In fact, it is what normal should look like as far as he was concerned. He made invaluable contribution to shaping upcoming legal minds in every institution he was involved in. Being a member of council of the University of Pretoria for an incredible tenor of 17 years was an epitome of his commitment to the growth and development of the next generation. The same intensity that he showed towards his total strangers, he would also show to his friends, who are too many to mention. During his lifetime, KK formed many great friendships and relationships. In his professional capacity, Justice Mtiane lived, walked, and breathed excellence and distinction. After graduating from University of Zululand, Justice Mtiane qualified as an attorney in 1975, and true to his entrepreneurial spirit, he started his law firm the very same day that he came um, from admission, using a borrowed desk and a chair. With hindsight of his own upbringing, it was no surprise that Justice Mtiane's focus on representing the poor and less advantage was part of his mission that saw him take up political, criminal, and civil cases. In 1984, Justice Mtiane was admitted to the bar and went on to take up Silk as a senior advocate. Justice Mtiane was a consummate professional and his stellar work gained him respect amongst his peers and eventually recognition when he was appointed a judge of the Guazulu Natal Division of the High Court in 1997. Justice Mtiane was later appointed as a judge of the Supreme Court of Appeal and after serving for some years in that court was appointed its deputy president, which is the position he held until he retired in 2014. He also served as a chairperson of the electoral court 
and chairperson of the Commission of Inquiry into the remuneration and conditions of service in the public service and public entities. Justice Mtiane also served as an acting justice of the Constitutional Court at some stage. Justice Mtiane made a significant contribution to the cause of justice in this country through his work as a judge, including his contribution to jurisprudence, as well as through the various roles he played in various committees and judiciary. He was part of the team of judges and magistrates that accompanied Chief Justice Mukweng Mukweng on his fact-finding mission in various jurisdictions abroad to study the best practices for the enhancement of, among others, access to justice, judicial education, and judicial case management. As I've extensively shared, Ubaba lived a full life, an all-rounded human being who never allowed his professional life to take away from his first love, Umakuzwai, and his family. He also had another first love, which was sports and golf in particular. As a former amateur Zulu Royals player, he was a diehard Amazulu supporter, Usut. He was an unwavering Arsenal supporter though. He was a Ghana. He was a Ghana, a Ghana for life. In fact, Justice Ntiane passed away in the midst of his mission to recruit the younger family members into the Arsenal family because the older ones were taken by the Manchesters of this world by buying them Arsenal memorabilia from his visits to the Emirates Stadium to watch his favorite team live in action. Sports was life for Justice Mtian. Never want to play even a single game of golf purely for fun, but for the life lessons that golf teaches you. One of the happiest moments of his life was traveling to watch the US Open at Augusta National and being privileged to experience live the historic moment of when Tiger Woods made the now legendary comeback, every golfer's dream. All that Justice Mtiane did and achieved in his professional life was always underpinned by humility. A man who never wore his professional accolades as a badge to look down on others or elevate himself above another. Even on the day when a security guard at a hotel he was staying in, seeing him often, asked him what he does for a living. And when he told that security guard what he does for a living, that he was a judge, the security guard laughed at his face in disbelief because according to that security guard, Ubaba looked nothing like a great man that he was. Justice Mtiane is survived by four girls, Bachabulile, Zamandungwa, Zanele, and Ayanda, and eight grandchildren, Mangaliso, Ndalo, Letutando, Malibongwe, Mbulelo, Owetu, Minentle, and Uyigogwetu. Baba's memory shall forever live in our hearts and minds. Uyibegile induge bandla sokhulu. Hamba kahle babuwakhe. Hamba kahle our kind of dad. Hamba kahle sikhangane. Sikhangane sakhanga amadoda. Ndaba Zondo so sas Ntungwa lama ntungwa So cool no bog Ngun Gamaneguan Luvunum zad Mzadu zabant Mzuil lem lem Mtant Owa tant isizu zonkan
Okay, we may be seated. Thank you very much, Zama Siabonga Kulu, and Gugus Fundela Obishwari Yaso Shaza, Osum Shelo, Vingeting Sazo Mosho, Osum Show, Wam Ted, Um Tian, Oso Kulu, Oso Shaza, Undab, Um Gun, Utumbel. Uyege lo slangen nga inam slangen. Sezo mshoni pabo kwen. Sea bonga kakulu bantwa nabaki. Uguti. Sea zuguti. Benze konke. Okse manjin. Ebebe nga gwenza. Uguti. Apile. Kwa uguti. Agvumi. Bam Hambisile Uguzatole, the best medical care that he could be given, and Gwangavum, but Siabonga Kulu, Matutegaz Gasoshas, Siabonga. I'm now going to call upon uh, Mr. Ntlantla Kwabe to give a tribute on behalf of the golfing community. In the name of Jesus, amen. Judge KK, as we would normally call him, uh, was a founding member of our golf social club referred to as the DCC School. We formed the school in 2016 and I was appointed the captain of the school for life. Judge KK ensured that the members of the school were frequently reminded that the captain of the school is an absolute monarch, meaning that I am the captain for life and that my word is final. This tribute represents the sentiments of a number of golfers who have interacted with Judge KK within and outside our school. I would like to highlight a few qualities that consistently stood out during our time with Judge KK. Oh, Kala, he loved and cared for Umisi Simtian. Uma Kumete. I had the privilege of driving with uh, Judge KK in the same car several times when we were going to play golf outside of Durban. I remember in, 20, uh, in November 2019 when we were traveling to Swaziland for our golf annual golf championship, Judge KK was frequently on the phone to check how Mrs. Mtiana was doing. In another incident, on one Saturday morning, we were playing at the Beachwood Country Club. A call came through informing him that Mrs. Mtiana needed some attention. He immediately abandoned the game without any delay to attend to his wife. Sometimes I will call him to check if he was available to play golf he would always check if there was someone to look after Uma Kumete before committing himself. That's how much he loved his wife. He loved his children. When he turned 75 years old in 2019, we organized a golf day in his honor. This was the first of its kind for our school. Members of our school got the opportunity to meet Ujash KK's wife and the children. Last year, we held our annual golf championship at Sun City. Judge KK invited his daughter, Zama, and son-in-law, Tando, to join us at our closing dinner. It was at this dinner that he made his final speech to the school. Again, he, he reminded the members of the school that the captain is an absolute monarch. <laughs> he showed respect and humility. Judge KK did not parade his achievements or title as a judge in order to be respected. Instead, it was his respect for others that earned him respect from them. 
It did not matter what your level of status was, young or old, educated or uneducated, rich or poor, Judge KK respected all of us equally. There were times when he would call me and express his view on some of the issues we were dealing with as a golf school. I would express a different view. Not once did he throw his weight around, but would relent and accept my view as his captain. Judge KK was generous and very supportive of our school. He always contributed additional prizes for these competitions. Two years ago, when we played our 36 holes competition for the first time, Judge KK offered to host the prize giving at his house. We spent the entire evening with him and his family until midnight, notwithstanding that Uma Kumete was not feeling well. In December, I organized the golf day at aiming at uh, um, supporting an organization that helps people who are affected by gender-based violence. Judge KK was the first person to purchase a football. He was later advised by his doctor that he would need to go through or for a minor medical procedure a few days before the golf day. This meant that there was a chance that he would not be able to play. He called me in his polite tone and manner and informed me of this situation and proceeded to say, Captain, don't worry about my donation. I'll find someone else to replace me. This is the kind of generosity that Judge K. Kim demonstrated. He was full of fun. I would always look forward to playing in his football. Um, he was good at telling stories. He will tell a story and you'll feel like you were part of the event or incident when it happened. In conclusion, one of our fellow golfers described Judge KK as a role model of good behavior. Indeed, he was. We have learned more from his actions than his words. Judge KK was not just a fellow golfer. He was a father, mentor, advisor, leader, and a friend to us. He, we loved Judge KK, and he loved us too. He will remain in our, heart, in our hearts for a long time to come. And to the family, the Bible says in Isaiah 40, verse 31, but those who trust in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kwabe. Uh, may I now call upon Ms. Mangaliso Lutuli, who will pay tribute on behalf of the grandchildren. And in the meantime, uh, the orchestra will be next if they could get ready. Uh, yes. I welcome you all in the wonderful name of our Savior Jesus Christ. Gimelaba Zugulu Namshanj. Ndalo Lutuli's message reads To the man that changed my life forever, we bid you farewell today. What you have done in my life is monumental. The impact you have made in my life, I can't truly really justify with words. It is much deeper. You have been around me my entire life, from birth till our last moments together. Growing up with you in, in this life has been more than an honor. I had the privilege of learning from you in all areas of life. The memories we have created are truly unforgettable, from bantering back and forth about Arsenal to dinners in Joburg, and all the times at your house. What I remember so deeply is how you helped my family and I through one of the hardest times. 
you immediately reached out and helped us in despite of everything, in despite of all the responsibility which you already have. You always made time to help my family and that I will forever cherish. And I really do hope to emulate what you have done in your lifetime. I will miss you Mkulu. I will always treasure you in my heart. I love you. Letu Tandum Tiani's message reads, my grandfather was without a doubt a huge role model in my life. He was a husband, a father, and a grandfather. Throughout my life, he's done everything for me and been an example of a good gentleman, and most importantly, a good husband. I remember day and night, he would do everything for his wife. Even while she was sick, he would stop at nothing to take good care of her, which shows how he would stick to his vows. As it says, even death, until death do us part. And now, as having to take over as responsibility for man of the house, I hope everything I do will make him proud. Kulu, I just want to say thank you so much for everything. Had it not been for you, I probably wouldn't be where I am or the person I am today. I hope that for the rest of my life, I get to be an example of you and be the man you want me to be, as well as taking care of everyone. So I won't say goodbye, but instead, until we meet again. May you and Coco enjoy the rest of your life in peace together. Malbongo Mkosi's message reads, you were such an inspiration, not just to me, but I'm sure for everybody you've spoken to. You were always so kind, so gracious, and just full of love. Every time I walk into Lalusha, I was always greeted with a smile from you, with a big hug and kind words. You inspire, to me, great, you inspire me to be great and kind every day, to live life to the fullest, and to love everyone for who they are. Seeing the best in people was always a talent of yours. You taught me joy, love, and kindness every time I saw you. You have been a rock in our family, and we will always honor and remember your presence. Fly high, Mkulu. You are an angel now. You look over us from heaven. Love you always, Mkulu. Mbulelo Mkosi's message reads, it really hurts to be typing this for a second time in only a few weeks, but here goes. Dear Mkulu, I can write a whole essay of the things you've done for me, but I'll keep it short. You were a living icon and you still are. You were a judge, a father, and a great grandfather to me. I know you're watching down on us in heaven with the love of your life, our grandmother. You always made my heart warm whenever we came down to the house, a smile always on your face when you saw us, and a laugh that never failed to make me smile. You showed us so much strength in our family, and you were an anchor and our rock. I know it may be difficult, different, I know it may be a different way of saying things, but this was a true love story in front of our eyes, like a black Romeo and Juliet. You and Coco were inseparable and stayed with, you, with each other through thick and thin, never leaving one another. You took care of her and she did the same with you. And now you two walk down yet another aisle this time, made of gold and even more praises. Ngelosi, Minentle, and Yiko's message reads, Mkulu, we had a lot of fun playing golf all together. Thank you for always being proud of us and letting us help you. It's sad you and Koko have left us. Mom told us that you guys were two lovebirds together, and now that Koko has passed, it's time for the other lovebird to go. We love you, Kulu. Lastly, I'll dis deliver my personal message. Today we're here to honor Ju Justice Kailile Kenneth Mtiane, Ubaba, Umkwenyane, Umkulu. There's so much to say about Umkulu. He was a provider, a loving husband, a father, a brother, a shoulder to cry on, and a friend to some. But he was an anchor for all of us. Someone who grounded you, he was there to guide you, and help when help was needed. And when you wanted to laugh, he had his jokes as well. Umkulu had a big, a big heart one of the biggest I've come across. His kindness knew no limits. And today we are all here to celebrate and honor the things that we loved about him. But more importantly, I'm here to speak on the mark that he left on all of us. Umkulu taught us many things, whether it be your, his daughter, his friend, his colleague, or his wife. And there were two things which stood out for me when I think of Umkulu. First things first, honor. Umkulu was a man who honored himself who honored those around him and always honored his word and his legacy is evidence of this. His accomplishments, speak to, his accomplishments speak to the value which he saw in himself. There was no dream too big, no mountain he could not climb. And this was a quality which we loved him for. 
one which he encouraged those around us to embrace. Umkulu used to call me Miss South Africa. <laughs> Umkulu used to call me Miss South Africa. So whenever I came up into the house with bruises or cuts, he turned to me and said, Hi, Bo Pela Jab. South Africa. For what reason? Asaz. But one thing I do know is whenever he called me that, I thought to myself, wow, there must be a beauty or elegance to me which others may see in me, but I'm oblivious. This name or joke which Umkulu attached to me reminded me of Guting Mbela. You can do anything. You can be whoever, whenever, as there's no dream too big. And as I said earlier, there's no mountain you cannot climb, even if it is being Miss South Africa one day. This is something I believe Umkulu shared personally with those around him, teaching us to honor ourselves. Because in fact, we aren't, in fact, we, where you started, it's a choice as his life was a testimony of that as well. Honoring his word while anyone close to Umkulu knows when he made a promise, he would deliver and even exceed your expectations. Umkulu looked after those around him. He was everything and anyone and that, he was everything to everyone and that was solely based on his love for Abant. This is a quality which I think we should take from him and that's honoring others as we honor ourselves. The second thing is humility. Umkulu was a very humble man, one of the most powerful and important attributes of growth in bo both in and outside of the ring. In all his achievements, he was not a man who gloated, but worked harder, and he was always hungry for more. Even after retirement as a judge, Umkulu continued to read, continued to expand his knowledge, and continued to offer his services, even after years and years of service. I pray we all continue to strive for more, as did he, always wanting more for himself, always wanting to give more to others, and always wanting to be more to those he was surrounded by. We are blessed to have been in the midst of an icon, ladies and gentlemen. Siabonga Baba, Siabonga Mkul. Rest in power, so cool. Hambagatles Kangan. was so articulate and eloquent, Mangaliso, your tribute to your granddad on behalf of the grandchildren. That was wonderful. And if I may say so, I think I'm cool with Prinsil. Miss South Africa one day. You will be Miss South Africa one day. Um, Something has happened which should not have happened, and we need to correct it. I'm told that uh, four members of the family are outside and have not been able to come in. Remember, we have got to keep to the number of 50. May I ask for four volunteers who will volunteer to vacate their seats to allow the four members of the family to come in, please. Please, thank you very much, there are two. Thank you very much, there are three. The, oh, there are more than, uh, yeah, there are four now, yeah. I think okay, so the four members of the family may come in. At this stage, I'm going to ask uh, the orchestra to render one item.
Thank you very much to the orchestra for that item. Uh, as we pay our last respects to Uso Shaza, I'm reminded of something that is well known to both our families, the Zondo family and the Mtiane family. Oh, Jabu knows I'm a no, I am the Bayaz Gash. Oh, goody. Begoody, no me, I began zone, no me, I'm Tian. My beggars were go color a cell phone open to lie or what is so shaz. Go again, born. Go back as a buzz of Kulomo, forty minutes, we are <laughs> so, <laughs> so, uh, the good, 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 so again, I say, I tell you, I am born, I am zut, I come to a gate, I say, I am mailing, I born to a gate. Now, I am tired, I am banganyan. So I am born, I am usu when I am going to court, I am the lawyer, I am not going to go to him born. Now I want to be like a my studies arm. Nakreta and Genza Matkles, Sakumanaga Kulu, as Kubega Namigui profession, Sakumanaga Kulu and Pella, Ujelwanebe to Abushia Kulu, Uzegube Manje, Ushi and Jena, Sesfana Nuputi, Nabafoabo, Bang and Pella, Siabonga Kakul. At this stage, I'm going to ask uh, Justice. Yvonne Mbata, 
a judge of the Supreme Court of Appeal, which is the court in which Justice Mtiane served for a very long time before he retired in 2014. That is the court where he was deputy president um, uh, of that court. So I'm going to ask Justice Mbata to come on the stage and pay tribute to Uso Shaza on behalf of the Supreme Court of Appeal. Just Good morning. I have been mandated by the President of the Supreme Court of Appeal, uh, Justice Mandisa Maya, to read a eulogy which he has penned on behalf of a, a, or in respect of Justice Kailile Kenneth Mtiani. Please allow me to, to read the eulogy as penned by a Justice Maya to the family and to all of you who are gathered here. Program Director, the Mtiani family, Chief Justice of the Republic of South Africa, Deputy Chief Justice, Premier of the Province of KwaZulu-Natal, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, all protocol observed. Good morning. It is a profound honor to speak about this luminary who I had the privilege of calling a friend. I vividly remember the first time I met Justice Mtiani, but KK as we fondly called him. It was in the afternoon of the first day of my acting appointment as a Supreme Court of Appeal judge on the 15th of February, 2005. I had reported for duty earlier that morning, filled with awe and trepidation that I had reached the pinnacle of the judicial ladder to work alongside the legendary legal minds I had only read about in law reports. Being the first day of court term, with many of the judges dashing around the building, greeting one another after a long recess and others preparing to go into court. I could only meet the court president and very briefly. I did not go to the morning tea at 11 a.m. because I lost my nerve and could not walk into the conference room alone. And I spent the lunch hour driving around town aimlessly, feeling terribly homesick around 1,500 hours, 25 minutes, a smiling gentleman who tend to be but KK walked into my chambers and without even greeting me, told me that he had been in court and had no chance to look for me. He knew that I was hiding away from everyone and had come to fetch me for the judge's afternoon tea. That was the beginning of our friendship. I was the youngest and least experienced member, or member in the male-dominated and extremely demanding court, with some of my colleagues as old as my parents. And as the first and only black woman judge in its history, I felt like a total misfit. But KK, a feminist who did not just speak about gender, gender transformation, but took active steps to achieve it, took it upon himself to mentor me. He would encourage me to bounce off him my views about cases in which I sat and check my judgments before I circulated them to other colleagues in my hearing panels to see if they were up to scratch until I was confident enough 
to assert myself and even write my own dissenting judgments against seasoned colleagues. He encouraged me to take up a permanent appointment in the court, dissuaded me from leaving when I felt I had had enough and could not go on, and later persuaded me to take up the court's leadership, thus securing the Supreme Court of Appeal, its first human deputy president and president in over a century. And he did not provide this tremendous support to me alone. He was a pillar of strength to all his colleagues, including the senior ones. A calming presence and a unifying force in a court filled with difficult intellectual giants who could pacify warring colleagues and help heal rifts among them. This is evidenced by the outpouring of grief from his colleagues across the color and gender lines who have variously described him, I quote, as an exceptional human being, a most treasured colleague, a good, warm, and kind man, someone who made it his task to see to the welfare of his junior colleagues, making sure that they were not overwhelmed by the heavy workload to a breaking point always willing to lend a patient ear and helping hand, whose love and compassion for others knew no bounds. A lovely human being, a person of great integrity and an excellent judge, a wonderful human being, friend and colleague, a beautiful soul and a fount of wisdom, the epitome of a scholar and a gentleman. Close quotes. In his message to us, when the news of Bud KK's passing, my predecessor, who was the head of the court during Bud KK's tenure, expressing his devastation, wrote, I quote, he was like an older brother on whose wise counsel I depended a lot. I have not only lost a former colleague, but a brother and a true friend, close quote. This gentleman was a true embodiment of a judge and lived up to his name, Kailisha, in the manner in which he conducted himself with honor and integrity, and his court, treating his colleagues and legal practitioners who appeared before him with respect and dignity and fairness. We all enjoyed sitting with him in court because it was just was easy and comfortable to be around him. His intellectual prowess and commitment to his work were as deep as his humaneness. Despite his humble beginnings, he built an illustrious legal and judicial career, became one of the first black silks in, in the democratic South Africa, and thereafter plowed his career all the way to the Supreme Court of Appeal, where he was only the second black judge of African descent and later the second black deputy president of African descent in the court's history. In the close to two decades on the bench in the High Court, Supreme Court of Appeal, the Electoral Court, the Constitutional Court, and beyond our borders, he wrote numerous seminal judgments and leaves a rich legacy and memory bank for our jurisprudence. And he continued serving his country even after he retired from active service as a judge. Good KK's passing has left a gaping hole, not just in his family, but in the entire nation. We have lost a dedicated and outstanding jurist, a patriot, who still had so much to give his country and her people. We will miss him. I take this opportunity to extend our deep gratitude to family, especially his children and grandchildren, who he utterly loved for allowing us to share in this remarkable man's life. We hope that you will draw comfort in knowing that your father and grandfather made such enormous contribution to the development of our jurisprudence and democracy and enriched so many people's lives. We hold you tightly in our thoughts and prayers 
in which both put KK and Sis Tandue eternal rest. Thank you. Those are the fond memories and wonderful words, words from the President of the Supreme Court of Appeal, Justice Mayer. Thank you. Thank you very much, Justice uh, Yvonne Mbata, uh, reading a tribute to Justice Mtiane by the President of the Supreme Court of Appeal, Justice Maya, who is the President of the Court in which Justice Mtiane last served. I am now going to call upon, according to the program, it looks like I should call upon both of them, but uh, I will leave it to them whether they come up at the same time or they come one after the other. Uh, it's a tribute by the family, and I've got the name of Miss Class Zata, and Oba Jabulile Mtiane Oba Jabulisa Uso Shaza No Makuzwayo Babona Gutao Bagwazu Tola Umtwana Nabo Sia Sia Bonga Jabu Nino Miss Class Zata Nenzobono Manizaga Nyeganya No Makuza Miss Zata Thank you. Uh, the orchestra should get ready uh, after Uchabu has spoken. Bonga de Lituba, Lugniges or Bantanabagasis, Lugutinki Bege, Gomde Nuagacuza, Ugut Ula Fegel Gangaganani, Usbari Umtian Usbarum Tiane Uigo Gongege Gacuza, Watata Usisi, Wamenza Uncuscas, Wam Shinja Ubo Miss Cuzayo, Wabo Missisim Tian Umesim Tatile. Wasa wenza gonke. Usbaru wenze gonke ekfanele agwenze kumdasha denayo. Umtandile. Wamtlenga. Geskate uti ee unes. Wabugu usbaru watikange ngwazi kutungoska zwa manga lalikaya ngezi nyinzu. Wamtata wamsiskolini e university ongoye. Washinja waba utisha. Uguze asyute is dingos gasbar. Conke logo wagu utando aye nalo. Usbarus fikti de tinasum de naga kuzoi. Sise na bafoe to beu four. No se si besi na bo beu three. Usbar wabatata wabenza bagubo. Was queen ya wasenza abantua nabake usbar. Nama abafo wabo, nama o tati wabo. O puti baminje. Wagus bar, dos bar wang and bella, o a lo bola. Bem tandang in the dismangal sayung shuba, but mugs of figus barum tiane, quang attics of figum munt um cool decay. Good at a zel, wagzan, you would conjure yin, and a jabusum tian govana, a messe figure, u figure in jabulo, ye nu cobus barrek bingalella, u bingalella abe ninja bulo, u beg letter uk jabula. 
Jogo binga na ke wai kamba watu bacha bulile. Ufanya na ye usbari la eko na wakbako na inja bulo nga sosongi skat. Ushali lege no sisi, nati. Singa usi usbari baki. Aiki ndobunga itoli usbari e usizo, not imali. Usizo uvultola ukagegile ukulelwa. Fone usbari umtia ande usbari ngiz kulelwa ganje laikai. Usbaru zo kipu tumsan ene moto, tumsan putumak antiklas ayo lungisa lenda ifunai. So ube igwa gonke, eno si zo gutina, especially mena, usisi ube gati eng tata njenge ngani ngoba ngi mngani ngu mati nungubo. Ayiko inda ifuna nga ito udusisi, umanga bengi tinga. Hai imari. Usizo ngangil tola kakudu ngosbara etumela nje utumsa na tambo mlegelela. Usbaru hambe wa hamba nga usisi wanga apila. Umenga pili lusisi. Usbaru begwe nza gonge gote. Ube siza. Ambuga mbugu sisati. Umanga abu maatjabu enga pili. Akengi mtate ngi mse echesta vilu. La umawake mbuga. Ae kona, ishala kona. Lagu yika ya laki. Shambe kuzo fegbe kona usizo. Olzo kuba kona. Umeye kaya, i plastigi kona usbara, aga ikoswa. Ugut abe ni plastige tuzi kwa, kazo tumenge na, kale tatu li plastigi kunge ni li. Sia ibonga usbara i plastigi yako, ubunga ikoswa. Beiba kona i plastig. Kombi zikutu ye kweni pela, e kweni aungeni nge zandli. Na gosbar bako au ngeni ngezandli. Usi sige simbonga kakulu bendo sbar. Masi ya gwanongo ma kuko kazi mbetu la umaye zalwa kona. Usbar obe sambisa lenlele. Sahamba sahamba nati sakula. Watu sbar aisbar uzo hamba nini. Saati aisbar uzo hamba na mtlanji. Ati minangzo figa kisasa. Goba nati sese kulile asesi na gukungane kutisambi ngako. Si hamba injeli ya ganongo magbuga mawitu. Na yusbar, bafeba mjablele, bamenzele yonki indo na manje, bebe fona njali yusbar esespele, lagwazwa figu sugula kelu kwen yusbar. Usbar esi ambonga kakulu getina kakuzwa. Usenzele gonke. Watanda bandu anabaki. Usbar gazange ilu babu taimina. Enzo la mante mbaza neota. Enzo wenza anji. E yusbar walbo nusizo lala mante mbaza na ufaifu. Ezwele uhafwe sanji, uwe shu. Kutu sbari, wawatanda, wawatande zedwe, wawajablela ezedwe. Azanga isole. Na manji, usbari njengu bibuga nje. Konke, la manito mbaza na nguwa usis. Ewo ma five no mkwenyana. Iwona tata zelile nguwa usis. Enza yonke indo etinta na noma mzondo. Benza yonke indo labantwana wa hambu sisi kale enzelo yi labantwana. Na manje ba minge nya wa bantwana baga sisi. Kalu mundo shonelu yeno yi lala pansi. Kota laba sile obe sugu menga lilu langa. Be minge nya una manje ba semili. Haba kwa kuzwa yoge baya bonga. Kakulu usbari lo. Ube usbari nge mpela. Uhamsa nene mpilo ga sisi. Utema ibo ni mpilo ga sisi yesha. Kwa uye numbambayo. Beti mbambi ili mtambe e e e ya lapo si kona nati. So tispuma sita wati siyo mbambi isa sinusbu. Masifika siti siya bamba. So tisati mbambi idu sisika ngani. Atu situpu babu waki. Haungoba siya msiza nju sisi nange sebuzu babu waki. Aga neri segi lufunu swarabi la etu zi waki. Ngobu ya zgutu yenu mnagege langembele. Uhambe kwa hamba gesa koni skati. Usi saka sako wazu wenza luku. Usbaru njaba ngeencho ngitu. E usbaru wangenze linte nga gazo bonu. Uti keshe kandili atatwe ito olu lizo ufa gwenzi. Usbaru mtiane. Wabondi usi saka sako wazu gia pezulu. Hambu usbaru wabuya ne keshe. Angu wazu gonge loku. Ya buya le keshe la begwa la usi smai figa ni usbaru vela espelde. Uzo figu usbaru mbambi gata mfage e keshe nla. Mtate li hambi naa. Yote mesele apatu subari. Bapai makuzwai. 
Papa, I could say, Oh, we are a peg and a gain. Usbar, as a cupugusis, as a city lapayan. So Usbar, Utelegong and Gempilo Yaki, Bethel let you the work and getting Langa Eclesi and Ogarus Barutis Bar and Gatiman Chesi, a Gabon and Gatanazi, Gumawak, Umawak, a corner on Gaham Bigache, Utis Bar and Gambamba. Got a young she, you macuza, young and she ye. Utus barring a kal and got young and she, you macuza. Conke look up the legil good alum lomogas bar. Usbar rubes on gomlomatis barring gag and peel a minuma wakang gag. Gag and sha luma wakang gag. Say albonga getting a baracuza, your utando, or los elizella dalutin landilan and go hamba, gusashi sanji, ulande luta de wheat. Genga yo tando buna. Say a bonga given to anabagasis, this bonga gong, keng, banda way to kulan, and is o kulu jovu corner, ni bo pe, ni bo pe, ni bo pe, the clean is this, bantabam, a guko gun and goba guatinu cob. Say Hulega, whose bamboo woof, gapes, whose gunga la lake, a gla lake. Cuzo hamba camp on kulunkulu and bo pe, conke gwenzon kulunkulu, say a bonga geka malinko switches, amen. Firstly, um, I'd like to observe all protocol, greeting all the leadership that is in our midst. I would like to thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for this opportunity, standing here on one of the I think most important days of my life, our lives, with my sisters and, and the Mtiane family. I started panning down, you know, taking, thinking, oh my God, my speech on this day, what do I say about my, uh, our father? My mom's husband, you know, our, our hero, empowerment. Where do I begin? You know, I, I panned up, I, 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 just, I just stopped. But as a jabu, bachabu lile, what if you get before the leadership, the friends, the family, before national television, and then you. You, 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 you stutter. 
Then I said, no, my Lord, fill my heart that I may be able. There are no words that can be able to, 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 to resemble who our father was in our lives. We have been fortunate as the Mtiana family. We, we met the divine nature of God here on earth. I'm not idolizing our father, Mtiana, I'm not. But our father has given us a picture of who God is, the God, the father in heaven. The more we hear from friends, from family, from colleagues, telling us their experience of our father, how he's impacted them, how he's influenced them, we're like, yeah, you know, that is love personified. That is a divine encounter. God is not a magic. Love of experience. Forgiveness over and over and over we have experienced. Humility. I mean, I'm a nothing compared to my father. But my father would call me and consult with me, looking for a view. My father would call a, grand, a grandchild, consulting, looking for a view. And mind you, all of these views would be consolidated and then he'd move, move forward with a decision. What man is this? So magnificent a man, so majestic a man, so a man of stature. I didn't even know all of this. I mean, I've been wondering, wow, okay, category two, what, ooh, ooh. We never knew, we never experienced half of that at home. Too humble. I got a call one of these days. Utilo Puti, yo, your father. We were with him as Zingolweni, as on Gwabu Katin Boyuak. Waketa didn't send one of his workers, didn't send one of his girls. And then after that funeral as Zingolweni, he eats the lunch there. So humble. We have experienced love, real love, non judgmental, inspirational. He has inspired all of us to be the best that we can be. His deeds, his works speak on his behalf. That is why I can never say, oh, my, my, my father used to do this, our father used to do this. I can never, I would not know where to begin. We, I, I look for one word that could, we could, I could say this is the word that defines him. That is why I, I said, okay, we're going to rest with love. Because this is, this is someone who stepped out of his way selflessly to be generous at all times, to put himself behind, put his wife at the forefront. You know, at home, our father, we all knew, five girls and our mother, we knew where he was at whatever time with who, whoever. I, I don't know what made him think I deserve to know that I, Chabu, I'm back at 10.30 because I'm going to start there, start there, do this. Like, like, what are you talking about? And he'll be at home exactly 10.30 on the dot. You know, I mean, who am I? Like, like I don't care, you know. But, but our father saw it fit that we all knew his itinerary, where he was doing what with who. What a gentleman. You know, he has, you know, he's, he, I, I, I never knew there was a difference between a girl and a boy. It wasn't an issue with me. Because he made sure that you, Jab, we are a girl, but, 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 but he, uh, no limits. There's no limit for you. You are self-sufficient. You are all that. You are all beautiful. You are all capable. You know, you're going to do it. If they say, out of five, there's three people who are going, or there's one person who's going through, I know that's you. He gave, a, he planted those seeds in us, that we are winners, we are champions. 
the whole family. And I'm told it's not just his family. Everyone he met, we had his golfers that came through. Each one of them shared a story to say, you know, your dad made us feel special. He lifted our confidence, each one of us, for some reason. He made you feel like you are the only person in the room. We are so grateful to our Lord and Savior for having given us this opportunity to see a glimpse of who God is. To have given us a glimpse to experience that inspiration that births within you that, that greatness. We are so privileged to have an experience of the, 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 the greatness, the excellence, the dignity. Who, who made us believe that you don't have to get into a room and start mentioning your accolades or your achievements or your, your status or your education, but let your deeds and your works speak. That is who this man is that we are gathered here today. I'm so grateful. I'm sure my family is so grateful. The girls are grateful. Grandchildren are grateful. The challenge here that we, we are having as his kids and his family is that Oh my God, what a legacy. I've cried. My father, you know, my father and diplomats were all equal. Grandchildren are equal. Daughters are equal. Everyone equal. Until the last day, I think he knew, he was going, he knew that this is time. Okay, okay, democracy, we're all, all good. My girls know now they're all equal. He said, Mafungwas, step aside. One, two, three. I need you to do one, two, three. What a great man, what a gentleman. You know, so, so in honor of, of this gentleman today, we are saying, Lord God, we do not know. These shoes are too big. I tremble to think, how do we take this baton and move? No pressure, our friends and family. But we trust that the Lord and Savior within us will give us that fire and that inspiration so that man thanga na nati ngati ngeli ngi lang au inga na zamti na zampo kumti ya. Let me step down. Ngeng is ngeng imkert. He's such a great man. Ngam saba elele like lele kona. We are so grateful to God for having given us this gift and thank you for bringing out the best in him. Friends, family, colleagues, we thank you for having brought the best gift. O babu mo kweng mo kweng. U u yang tegi sa u yas dalto itorizen. We maybe you know, you know, see thag, you know. Um golfers, he would send ama scores, ama golfers, beboze, beboze, abanye smart, smart thag, you know. So so let me just step down. It, my time is up, but Thank you, friends and family, for making our dad have the best life and make the best impact. We are so ever grateful. Thank you. That was amazing. That was amazing. You may be seated. That was amazing. That was a moving tribute to your father. That was a moving tribute. Thank you very much. He and your mother are smiling, looking at how well you spoke. This is wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, at this stage, I'm going to ask the orchestra to give us one musical item. Oh. 
Sorry, the orchestra. It's. Uh, I've been told that uh, uh, there is a breach of the regulations in terms of the of the uh, number. So I'm bound to bring that to an end. Uh, so please forgive me. Uh, let's let's stop the music item there, so that we are within the the number of 50. Uh, I've been told that we are above the number of 50 with the orchestra in. So let, let's let 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 let's stop that. <coughs> um, let, let's, let's move on. Uh, the Chief Justice of the Republic is here uh, to give, together with his wife, to give support to the family. Uh, but he will not be speaking. So at this stage, I'm going to ask uh, the Premier of Guazulu Natal to come forward and uh, give his speech. Uh, I have been told that because there was a breach of the regulations as a result of the number, the Premier might no longer be able to continue to the cemetery. But uh, to the extent that there was a breach, I have instructed that uh, the uh, choir, the orchestra should leave uh, the, the, the room. Uh, Mr. Premier. Program Director, Deputy Chief Justice, Justice Zondo, 
the Mtia and the family, the Chief Justice of our Republic, Chief Justice, Justice Mukweng Mukweng, Justice Mbata, who is with us and spoken to us earlier, the members of the Executive Council of KwaZulu Natal were with us. The Director General of the Province of KwaZulu Natal, senior officials representing the presidency, as well as the officials from the Department of Justice the officials from national government, the religious leaders who are with us today, especially Chaplain Kumete and Reverend Ian Boots, distinguished compatriots, good morning to all. As we listen to tribute and the outpouring of love since the breaking of the news of the passing away of the retired Deputy President of the Supreme Court of Appeal, Justice Kaeli Lemtiane. The old Latin legal maxim has been echoing in my head, and that says, let justice be done, though the heavens fought. Indeed, let justice be done, though the heavens may fall, because without justice, we cannot talk about freedom. Freedom, in essence, remains the most cherished goal of all humanity. As we bid farewell to a champion of justice and liberation activist, Par excellent, we make a solemn vow that justice will be served, though heavens may fall, so that the children of Umzinyati and Wetwe, Kwamashu, Nyanga, Mangaung, Kwanyamazani, and Soweto may grow to test the fruit of our hard won freedom. It is these children of our land who, when they feel that their rights are denied and their opportunities squandered, may trust that our courts will be the modern day David who will fight on their behalf and defeat the current day Goliath who stands between them and their dreams of the promised freedom. The demise of this towering legal figure, Justice Mtiani, at a time when our country desperately needs it, legal patriot, can strike fear despite the fact that heavens were probable, kind enough to call him at the sunset of his years. To come to terms with the loss so colossal and a wound so gaping, the idea of a trumpet of the blind Lady Justice may play on, and this brings the words of comfort echoed by the American Justice, Judge Lenhand, where he posed and said, liberty lies in the heart of a man and a woman. When it dies there, no constitution, no law, no court can save it." Close quote. Justice Hand goes on to assert that the spirit of liberty is the spirit which is not too sure that it is right. The spirit of liberty is the spirit which seeks to understand the mind of other men and women. The spirit of liberty is the spirit which weighs their interest along its own without bias. As we say farewell, 
Father, I will. Lufuno, Munguni, we make the promise that the flame of justice and the promise of freedom will not be extinguished in our hearts as long as there is a single citizen of our country who goes to bed on an empty stomach. We will become agents of justice ourselves to ensure that no child of the poor is denied access to education or adequate health. We will be ambassadors of justice and we will ensure that our grandmothers do not struggle to get water and that our daughters and sisters are safe in every corner of our beautiful land. We will ensure that the African National Congress, which Justice Mtiani passionately defended and defended it caters during the time of the struggle, remains the embodiment of the values of our society as it on its own has said that, as I quote, if there were to be a single measure of civilization of the National Democratic Revolution, it would be how it treated the most vulnerable in the society, close quote. Long after we have intend, his mortal remain on our rich soil, we will hasten to compose an epic song to celebrate Ndwetwe, Umzinyati, Ketomena, and our province. A song remind us that not far away from here, our ancestors blessed us with a special son, Ukayelise, who after mastering the law and the way of our captures, wanted our country to be a paradise of opportunity and a beautiful home for all her children. It will be a praise song that will make us rejoice in his larger than life leadership achievement on the local bench where he led with compassion, understanding and, destiny and distinction. There is no question that the sudden passing away of former deputy president of the Supreme Court of Appeal, Justice Mtiane, dealt a huge blow to his family, the local fraternity, our country, and the province of KwaZulu-Natal, where he was born and proved. Our nation has been dealt a double blow as Justice Mtiane passed just after the demise of his beloved wife, Mrs. Tandiwe Mtiani. And to the family, for that we say we know this is a double blow. May God be with you. Please accept when we say the loss you have suffered is not yours alone. We pray that your fond memories of your departed fathers and, and mother will give you strength to face challenges of this world. Justice Mtiani's passing has left us poor because he depart with a vast wealth of wisdom and local knowledge which the country desperately needed. We also wish to convey our gratitude as the government of KwaZulu-Natal to His Excellency President Cyril Ramaphosa for honoring, and and for honoring this humble and dedicated local scholar and practitioner with category two, special official funeral. As flags across the country flies at half mask, we bow our head in collective honor and tribute to this humble local eagle. As we know today, his was a journey that called for perseverance, resilience, and endurance because it was forever paved with only obstacles. But Justice Mtiane went on to excel and to inspire many others. He did well for one simple reason. He loved our people wholeheartedly. In a country that unshamedly enforced a crime against humanity, the apartheid system, he taught the best way to fight this legalized repression, and that way 
was the very same instrument of law. Above all, he excelled because he had an understanding that his vocation was a call to serve, a call to serve the noble cause on earth, justice and freedom for all. This reminds us of what former President Madiba, former President Nelson Madiba Mandela said, addressing the Law Society of Transvaal in October 1993, where former President Madiba said, at the time of the worst excesses of apartheid, judges and lawyers on the whole remained silent. Judges, magistrates, and prosecutors enforced apartheid laws without protest. Unwarranted sentences were called for and imposed for contravention of statute passed by unholy apartheid. Close quote. Matiba went on to call for the transformation of judiciary to have more black lawyers, more black women jurists on the bench in a future democratic South Africa. In that, that was the call that Justice Ntiyane responded to later. This he achieved not only through advocating the promotion of black legal practitioners and supporting the advancement of many women, but also through his groundbreaking judgments and the promotion of restorative justice. He was at home with advancing the restorative justice paradigm because no matter where his character took him in the world, he remained deeply rooted in the African philosophy, the philosophy of Ubuntu, which is underpinned by an idea that umuntu ngumuntu ngumungabantu. That is, I am because you are, or my humanity is tied with your humanity. From a young age, Justice Mtiane saw law as a powerful weapon and an instrument to liberate his country and to ensure that all people enjoy equality. In his flight to the top, Justice Mtiane kept his feet firmly on the ground by selflessly using his newly acquired local knowledge to advance, and in particular, advance the right as well as the protection of the disadvantaged members of his society. His humble beginning did not make him aloof. His success didn't make him above others. When the Etewini municipality honored him with a living legend award, he stated that he was doing his job of freeing people through his legal profession without expecting his without expecting any reward. We take this opportunity to bid farewell to one of those who have made a huge contribution in this country. He has been hailed as a unifying force, a glue that bounded together the, the judiciary during turbulent times and trials of transformation. For that, we say farewell to Chief Justice Mtiane. Hambagahle zondo sikangane uibekile induku ebanta. Nkosi ibe nani siyabo. Thank you very much, uh, Premier of Wazulu Natal, for that uh, wonderful tribute to Usosha Zoskanga Neundaba Umlambo, Siti Ngempela, Siezo Guti Ubumazi, Ubumazi Akul. Maybe you will have seen that before the Premier, 
came, started speaking, he spoke to me, and when he left, he spoke to me. He, he moved an application before me. <laughs> he moved an application and said, hey, if it were possible, as far as he is concerned, even if the Chief Justice did not plan to speak, if he could just say, come and say a few words and greet or something, that would be wonderful for the people. So he, he moved that, that application uh, to me. <laughs> uh, Chief Justice, would you like to, to come and just greet? And uh, thank you very much, Chief Justice. The steps are this side. Do I have to speak with this on, or can I take it off? <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes. To the Mtiani family, particularly his daughters, Jabu, Zama, Zanele, Ayanda, the grandchildren, and the Kuzwa family, I am here together with my dear wife, my people, from the depth of our heart to register also on behalf of the entire judiciary of South Africa our truly indescribable pain as a result of the immeasurable loss that the departure of the one that I refer to affectionately as Ubu Diwam. Has delivered to us. I began that way and then acknowledge the Deputy Chief Justice of our Republic, Raymond Nyamezeli Mlungi Sizondo. I know he doesn't like the Mont part of it. <laughs> And the Honorable Premier of the Kingdom, we refer to KwaZulu Natal simply as the Kingdom in our circles together with Butke. Premier Sitle Zigalala, Justice Mbata, members of the Executive Council of the Kingdom, all fellow mourners, good morning. It truly is a double barrel blow, this one. Because reflecting on what happened, I just couldn't think of a death of somebody I admired or a couple I admired that, that came closer to it. Apart from that of Dr. Miles Monroe and his dear wife, Ruth, because they died in a flight crash together, a man who was determined by reason of his integrity and the deep-seated love for his wife, never to be moving around without his wife to avoid the ever-abiding temptation of the wicked one. When former Chief Justice Sandy Lengobo was about to vacate office early in the morning. And I've shared this with the Deputy Chief Justice and other colleagues in case people think that I'm making this up. But he was acting at the Constitutional Court. He came to my office and he said, Chief, not because I was Chief Justice, I wasn't yet, and not because he was prophesying, but because in the many fact-finding missions that we undertook, particularly when we went to the United States of America, to revive the critical role that the African justice system has played over the years, particularly in the area of restorative justice, avoiding people's things being stolen and all they get in return is for somebody to go in prison and get nothing in return. One of our focus areas was to interact with the Nab Nabaho people 
who are a nation within a nation, those, uh, uh, they call them Red Indians, I don't know the other name, but the, the real natives of America whose land was taken from them. We wanted to interact with the king, the chief, they call him the chief and the people, to learn from their institutions how we can revitalize the African judicial system that we have allowed those that have always been against everything African to run it down and portray it as the only discriminatory justice system, as if it was not in the system, the judicial system we have inherited that women were called something other than human beings, as if the deepest and, and, and biting discrimination that we have ever discriminated, experienced came only from Africans, when in fact we got exploited by reason of our generosity of spirit. So we wanted to revitalize that, and Bhutti, coming back from that, undertook to spend, I think, two weeks in the Mahalisburg at his own expense, to compile a report that we had so diligently worked on, not only on how to revitalize the African court system, but also to work on court annex mediation for which members of the public would not have to pay a cent. Free, handled by highly competent people, so that access to justice and the speedy finalization of cases could become a practical reality. He contributed, I see my, my brother and friend has risen now to warn me. It looks like I never was going to have time to speak anyway. <laughs> <clears throat> he contributed immensely in the program we're holding in abeyance by reason of a paucity of resources. The court modernization system that would have enabled the South African court system to function more efficiently and effectively even during the lockdown. Let me round up by saying, Booty came to me early in the morning and said, Chief, because we were in, after our interaction with the chief of the Navajo people, he started calling me chief. I had a golf uh, hat, although I don't play golf, with a, what is it? A feather. So you know kings and chiefs and uh, they like the feather. He said, Chief, I've been reflecting this morning and I just couldn't have a rest you are going to be the next Chief Justice of this country. I said, why are you saying that? I didn't tell him what the Lord told me. It's not madness, I hear from God. I didn't tell him what the Lord told me. He said, I've been reflecting. You've been judge president. Look at the projects you have led us in as an ordinary member of the Constitutional Court. Take my word, you are going to be the Chief Justice of this country. Secondly, one thing I treasure about him was that when I was under the severest of attacks, but particularly because I said God wanted me to be Chief Justice, Booty came to me and said, you know, Chief, the Lord said, the Deputy Chief Justice and I were discussing shortly before his departure. I, I, I felt tears welling down my eyes when I saw the letter that was drafted already that I was on the verge of signing, appointing Boot KK to chair a judicial conduct tribunal. Two other people who were to serve with him in that committee were already aware that he was going to be leading. Now the whole thing has been scuppered. He continued long after his retirement to chair a committee that is responsible for the transformation of the judiciary. So we have lost. I prepared nothing. I wasn't going to speak. I just wanted my wife and I to register our support to the family for the loss of Mama and Booty by coming here. Well, I'm going to pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord God Almighty, I render a prayer out of respect for you, not out of the desire to grandstand, not out of some suspected popularism, not out of some hidden agenda, because I love and respect you and know that Butmtiani, Butkeke, his wife and children, where, where and are your children?
You are not ashamed of you. Spirit of God, there is no comforter like you. You were specifically sent on earth to deliver comfort to us, Lord. And I stand here asking you, like King Jehoshaphat, are you not the God in heaven? Don't you reign over the nations of the earth? In your hand is there no is there not power and might so that no one, including coronavirus, can withstand you? Lord God Almighty, the wicked and their wickedness, won't you judge them? Won't you judge it? Father God, I pray this is the time, this nation, the continent, and the world over, this family in particular that I use as a point of contact, have been crying. Because a monstrosity we've never experienced before called coronavirus has ravaged this country and the nations of the earth. My father, please intervene now. Let there be no doubt that you are the almighty God and that you exist. Manifest your almightiness, Lord. Let your glory come down. You said... In South Africa, there will be the greatest move ever in the history of the earth. That will tip over to Africa and the rest of the world because when Jesus Christ was about to be killed, it is Africa that embraced him. And when Jesus Christ was carrying the cross, the last mile of that burden, he was held by an African man, Simon of Cyrene, to carry it for the God. You said you will remember us for good the same way you remembered Mordecai. Father, we can't wait any longer. We know that to you a thousand years is equal to a day. You are the God who can birth a nation in one day. You are the God who created all creation in six days. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. If you could come through for Mordecai, Esther, and the Jews. If you could come through for Jehoshaphat and the Jews when they cried, again, cried out uh, unto your father against the Ammonites, the Moabites, and people of Mount Zion, then you can step through father. Beginning with them, Tiani family, and any other family that has lost a loved one as a result of this demonic monster to comfort us. Intervene now, father. Otherwise, they will continue to ask, but where is your God? Comfort all of us, my Father, give us the assurance that your judgment against all wickedness has been delivered, Father. Manifest, my God, this month your power and whoever and whatever needs to be judged. My Father, let the merciless angels do their work. Let the angels of David do your, their work. Let the sword of justice do its work. Let the angel of fire, the angel of judgment, the angel of the winds of the Lord do what you have deployed them to South Africa to do. My father, embolden your children not to be intimidated against prayer. Embolden your children not to be intimidated to be your children for the God. Manifest your power and judge the Antichrist and all wickedness now. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 You hear me? Thank you very much, Chief Justice, for uh agreeing to come and say a few words and greet uh we thank the premier for moving the application <laughs> we have run out of time the premier has asked that at this stage he be given an opportunity to hand over the national flag to the family because uh, he will not be with us at the cemetery uh, as he does that um, I see that we have run out of time. Is it possible for Reverend Booth to speak at the cemetery? Is, is that fine? You are going to do like that because we, we don't want to be in breach of the regulations. We are supposed to finish at 11 o'clock and it's two minutes or three minutes to. Premier, you, you may uh, hand over the, the flag.
Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Premier, for handing over the flag to the family. Um, I just want to say we thank the Chief Justice for having taken the initiative on the day that uh, Justice Mtiani passed on to immediately make a request to the President that he honors Justice Mtiani with a, an official funeral, and we thank the President for agreeing to that. At this stage, we are going to end this part of the program. We thank everybody who has spoken, but the, um, the vote of thanks will happen at the cemetery. I need to make two announcements. There will be food packs that will be available to be given to everybody, uh, but you are supposed to eat them at home or wherever. Uh, you can take them away, number one. Number two, I'm told there are three buses for the family that are available. Uh, we are now going to therefore move uh, to the cemetery. Uh, the cottage will depart for Red Hill Cemetery. That's where we are going, Red Hill Cemetery. I want to appeal to those whose task is to make sure that we keep within the maximum number of people uh, to make sure that we, we never exceed that, uh, that number of 50. Um, thank you very much. I think that uh, we, we uh, should uh, now allow the family to uh, leave first. Yes, yes, the family will leave first. Thank you.